Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna talk a little bit about backup not about a big backup but about the backup that I do I do not have a lot of data that I need to well I do actually have a lot of data now how do I formulate that okay I don't have a lot of very 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 important data to back up I don't know why I even back it up but the main thing that I back up is all of these videos that you're watching and I don't really know why I'm backing them up. I'm probably never gonna need all the raw materials, but for some reason, I'm still backing them up. And yeah, I wanted to share how I do that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that, and um, this is just one of them. So um, let's, um, let's, let's do a bit of drawing. Okay, so here is my setup. I have a video camcorder, the one we're recording on right now and that um, records in 4k meaning that if you see a 20 minute video well i probably recorded about 35 minutes that's how much bullshit i say along the way that i have to cut out that is recorded on an sd card uh, here i record on a 64 gigabyte not important oh that's that could be a big g gigabyte not important but well I record on that there's enough for about an hour ish um, usually I can put two three four video well maybe there's room for a bit more than an hour I don't remember I usually empty it out every after every weekend Um I record on that I take the SD card out and uh, all of this is my PC in the living room um, that is uh, that's the two monitors that's the PC and this one is an SD card reader so I take the SD card and put it in the reader I should get another color for this Let's see if there's any juice in the screen one so um, from that I, I put the data I don't put it on the computer in the living room I, I transfer the data directly from the SD card and down to a folder Let's let's make a folder here. Folder on my um, on my editing server, and that server is actually right here in the rack. We can just turn around and see it. The data center is very quiet right now because this server is actually the only one that is on. Uh, together with the Synology NAS up here this is the RS1219 plus that one is up and this server is on otherwise everything else is kind of shut down so well I cheat when you guys are not watching I have a power bill as well so yeah that's how I cheat I turn it off I transfer the data directly down there uh, to that server and uh, it's locally stored on the server I think it's a virtual machine that that I do my editing on and I think I have about I've given it 200 gigabytes that I put uh, the files on I could make a drive that is a lot bigger than that but if I do that it does it just means that I don't clean it up as often and that's not good then I edit my video and normally I don't do this every week but I edit my videos and upload them to YouTube and all that good stuff and then every 14 days or three weeks or something I copy my data from from this folder and up to the Synology up here and there is an archive folder of that where I well, put the data there so that I always have it and I have every single file from every single shot that I've ever done I haven't lost anything yet so um, that is good and this Synology is in the living room and it's kind of my offline storage this one is always on it has four drives each of these are 10 terabytes and they're in a RAID 5 that's just RAID 5 and yes you will say that RAID 5 is not secure and I know I know if you don't have a backup it RAID 5 is, is not enough but in the living room I have this 
Synology box. This is the DS1815 Plus, and that's my offline backup. That means that uh, ever so often, very often, it's actually at the same time when I do this backup, I will also back it up to this box. Meaning that I'll turn this box on, copy the data to it, and turn it off again. I do this manually. I uh, I copy the files from the folder over to well this one first and this one second um, I copy it up here and I move it over here normally that's how I do it and then this folder is ready for more videos to go then I have actually set up an automatic copy from this Synology box and to an off-site off-site Synology that um, it's not at my playhouse it's somewhere else and Every day at 5 o'clock, that's uh, 1700 hours here, uh, this Synology box will communicate with this Synology box and tell this Synology box if there's anything new for it. Uh, this folder up here, if anything is new that this Synology box down here does not have, it will copy that over here, that way. This took quite a while to set up. We are talking about 11, 11 point, I think the last number I saw was 11.84 terabytes. I don't know, this green marker is not the easiest one to see. So let's go back to the black. 11.84 terabytes of data. My internet provider was not that impressed when I started to copy 11.84 eight four terabytes over the internet to this off-site location here I got into a bit of bad standing uh, as I did that and had to switch uh, to another internet provider luckily I had two so I could just go to the other one yeah I, I actually need to communicate with the first internet provider again and see if if they are still pissed I might have to just quit that subscription but it's a bit sad because it's an okay internet provider uh, they just didn't have the bandwidth for me to transfer that data on. Well, never mind. This offsite backup thing is pretty neat. And it's something that comes with Synology boxes. Hybrid backup, I believe it's called. It's pretty cool. So anything I put in this folder will be synchronized over here. And ever so often, it will also go and check if the data is good. If the data over here is good with the data over here. I don't know if it's bit rot or if there is a corrupt file or something. It will, it will it will check some of that. So in here in the living room, right here under my stereo is my Synology DS1815 Plus, which is the offline backup. Which I uh, well, there's a cable here going to the other room right there, and it's actually not connected to the internet when I'm not using it. So I put in that cable and then I back up to that box. Uh, cable goes over here, underneath the table here and connected in there to this box. This is the interface from the Synology box in the data center. Uh, and over here I have connected to the remote Synology box and it tells me that there is 18.8 terabytes of data available there. This is the hyper backup vault. We can kind of see that if I go out of it and I go up here again. Uh, it has an icon that looks like that. And go into it and it looks like that. So you create a vault on the Synology box where you want to store your data. And then on the other box over here, I have very cleverly disguised the, the server name that this is connecting to because, uh, yeah, just because. We can see that uh, this Synology box is the MPH NAS and over here this one doesn't say what it's called. I of course know what it's called, but I'm not gonna tell you. So if I put anything new in that folder, it will be automatically copied over to this vault over here every day at five o'clock in the evening. Well, we can actually see on the wall over here, if we see all tasks, we can see that it uh, connected today. Today is the 16th uh, of January, 2021. And at 15 seconds past five, it was connected. It uh, checked 
if uh, there was something new and that took 1 minute and 46 seconds so that that didn't take long at all down here i see that uh, it gives me the attention the drive is running out of space we could just check that let's see how close we are storage manager yeah i see we have used 11.8 terabytes and there are 14.4 terabytes available so that should be enough room for all of 2021 here so um, but i should probably think about getting a new drive for that one and on here is called hyper backup and this is really smart you can do backups to all kind of stuff uh, remote nas is not the only options you can also back up directly to cloud and all the other Ooh, cloud providers um, uh, I'm not sure if all of them are in there but a lot of them this is what it looks like when you want to create a new one and the one that I've used is a remote NAS device you can do that there's also some local options uh, well you can do that and then there's file servers different file servers and then there's cloud services of course Google Drive well there is a lot of other ones as well it also gives you some statistics of how you're doing. You can kind of see this is January and I haven't transferred any new data in all of January. But if we go back to December here, we can see that at some point I was at 7.6 terabytes and then in one go, oh, it was, it's kind of going up and going up. And that was me completing the, um, the transfer of the main part of the data on the 11th of December I had completed the main part of the data transfer and then on the 12th I, I copied a little bit more and then there was a long bit where nothing happened and then it it goes up here from 11.68 to 11.78 and I think it goes up again here I transferred some more data just doing a bit of cleaning and here's a bit more it tells me how many files was added and as i added so many files on the 11th of december that was the day that it had completed a month of copying data uh, it's just very big at that point that's when it actually completed the first time it has to complete the entire thing and then after that it's it's good and there is different thresholds down here that you can well if you want an alert for something so so for once I'm actually not gonna show you how to set that up. I myself went onto the interweb and found someone way smarter than me that had done it and it was just clickety click in one end and clickety click in the other end and it wasn't really a big problem. I do believe that I had some port openings that I had to do the first time in the firewalls and some NAT forwarding but uh, yeah, that was doable as well. And there is on Synology's page, there's a lot of help on which ports you need to open and um, why you're opening those ports. So it's a great piece of software that you get for free with your Synology. And it's not because I'm promoting Synology. I'm just telling you that it's an awesome box. <laughs> oh, kind of promoting them anyway there. But it's just cool to get all of these free features along with the, well, with the hardware which is very expensive and this backup tool works really well. Together with that, I use my Synology for my camera setup in the house and that is just running in there and I'm not using Synology's camera software. I was too cheap to buy their separate licenses for that. I'm running Ubiquiti cameras, uh, which is, well, they're expensive when you buy them and but the software is, is free, kind of like Synology. But I run that in a Docker container on there together with the management software for the Ubiquiti network. I have behind the servers over here, there are some switches and they need a Unify manager to work. Well, when you change something, uh, it needs that. Just wanted to introduce you to the Synology backup options where you can um, have a remote Synology box that you can access. And this is really great if you have a buddy and uh, well, you can kind of split data and you can do this encrypted so you can have your data laying on a box and no one else but you can actually decrypt the data that you have on there. So even though your data is on a box in someone else's home, 
well it's your data and it can go the other way so you have a chunk of data on your Synology box that well is your friends backup so yeah I would highly recommend you try and look into this I would also highly recommend that you give this video a like and visit my store and become a patron actually would very much like you to become a patron losing patrons out there thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye